Hello everyone, welcome back to The Problem With, the weekly show where I vomit my brain soup into your ear holes. Isn't that analogy weird? I made that up on the fly. That's how this brain soup works. Anyway, today I want to talk about did James Gunn ruin the DCEU before he even had a chance to actually enter the DCEU? But before that, we gotta run the ad! We're selling food! Today's video is sponsored by Factor. Factor helps you meet your nutrition goals by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals straight to your doorstep. If you know me, you know that I watch my macros, which usually requires planning, measuring, and tedious tasks. But Factor makes it easy for me with the perfect portion of meals of various kinds, all with the nutritional value that I'm looking for. So not only do I keep to my diet, but I also get a delicious, easy to cook meal. Are you looking for something high protein? Try the Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein per serving. Or maybe you're looking to watch your calories. Well, they've got you there too with dietitian approved calorie smart meals that are around 550 or less calories. I have Factor meals at least a couple of times a week and have yet to find one that I did not like. Factor even has Gourmet Plus meals if you're feeling extra fancy and you want to treat yourself to something special. Factor meals are my go-to fast meal whenever I'm hungry. So head to factor75.com or click the link below and use the code COMICSTORIAN50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. All right, so I feel like we need to talk about the James Gunn situation a second time because I want to get your opinions. But I do have an opinion as to the problem with James Gunn taking over the DCEU in the manner that he did. So let's recap a little bit as to what has gone on so you understand. Sometime... A long time ago, like December last year, maybe November, it was announced that James Gunn would be taking over leading the DCEU. This was immediately following the Black Adam failure, which, look, Black Adam, I think, broke even, but that's not considered a success in terms of a movie. Uh, and The Rock argued up and down, and we don't have any concrete numbers, but the fact of the matter is... It didn't break a billion. It didn't make a ton of money. It wasn't even considered a success by many metrics. So it's considered a failure. Following that, we had James Gunn come in. He immediately fired Henry Cavill, which caused a lot of problems because Henry Cavill just announced he was coming back. And then he announced his plan for the DCEU. Now, his plan for the DCEU is supposed to start with Superman Legacy. I think it's Legacy. Doesn't matter. It's a Superman movie coming out in 2025 by James Gunn. That's going to kick off his version of the DC Universe. Now, there's problems with that because it was announced that the DC Universe is going to be rebooting in 2025. We still had Shazam Part 2 to come out, The Flash to come out, Blue Beetle to come out, and Aquaman. And Aquaman is the reason I wanted to make this video, but we're going to come back to that in a second. Following this announcement, we were told that none of the movies coming out were going to be important. And I've made my stance known for a while. You can have solo superhero movies, and they can be very good, and they can be incredible. But what gets people in the seats is that interconnected universe. I love solo movies, but the fact of the matter is, if you do an obscure superhero like the Guardians of the Galaxy, more people are willing to give it a shot in hopes that it's going to link to the greater scheme of things. I'm not saying Guardians of the Galaxy wouldn't have done as well if they didn't link it in and show, I believe, show Thanos or link in one of the gems. Honestly, it's it's been so long since the first Guardians movie, I don't even remember how it linked in, but that was that era where we had Easter eggs in every movie that would link to the grander scheme of things. Even if they were small, minute, it didn't matter that much. So now we have the DCEU, and the DCEU has been, how many years now? Trying to promote people that don't matter, Okay. I've got them pulled up. So basically, the DCEU came out wonky. We had Man of Steel, which wasn't supposed to be the launch of the whole thing, became the launch of the whole thing. Then we immediately jumped into Batman v Superman instead of a Man of Steel 2 or a Batman movie. That immediately led into the bomb of the original Suicide Squad. David Ayer cut, would love to see that, but anyway. Then we jumped into the Wonder Woman movie, which did incredible, but then the Justice League... I don't need to go into that again, but we have two versions for a reason. One is terrible, one is incredible, but super long and unnecessarily long. We don't have a good Justice League movie. I'm just gonna say it. It doesn't exist, okay? We have a better Justice League movie in the terms of Zack Snyder's Justice League, but we can go on for days about the problems with that one as well. Anyway, we then moved into Aquaman, which 
weirdly enough, broke a billion dollars and taught the lesson to WB that obscure superheroes might be the way to go. So we continued forward with Shazam, Birds of Prey, and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. Can we just comment for a moment the fact that that, and I've said this multiple times, that is the stupidest name for a movie I have ever heard in my life. One, we're doing the Birds of Prey, which are generally associated with Batgirl. I understand that the Birds of Prey exist without Batgirl, but you know who doesn't realize that? Most people. Anyway, we also didn't name the movie Harley Quinn. Like, Look at that name, Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. You can't fit that on a marquee. Did no one sit there and go, here's the general letters that can fit onto a marquee. It's 100. This has 9,000. Let's do this. If, if you don't believe me, my local theater renamed the movie in week two to Harley Quinn. That was just what it's called. Anyway. We then moved into Wonder Woman 1984, and I think we'd all prefer to forget that that ever existed. Then we moved on to Zack Snyder's Justice League, which I've stated is the better version, but we still don't have a good Justice League movie. And we had The Suicide Squad. Now, at this point, the DCEU has been spinning its wheels, and we don't know what they're doing. The Suicide Squad is incredible, and the TV show that fell out of it, Peacemaker, is incredible. But no one watched it. It came out during the COVID years. It was 2021. We were still kind of dealing with most places being shut down and having problems. The Suicide Squad was one of the first movies to come out and try and break that mold. And it was a part of the HBO Max. We're going to put out, you know, this is when HBO Max was HBO Max and not Max. Because why should we keep the prestigious name of HBO? Let's call it Max. You know what I think of when you say Max? I think of Goof Troop and Goofy's son, Max. That's what I think of when you tell me I'm watching Max. I'm watching Goofy's son. Anyway, that's Benny's brain soup spilling everywhere. Anyway, back to what I was saying. We then moved into the Black Adam movie, which did not do well. We moved into Shazam, Fury of the Gods, which did not do well. We then moved into The Flash, which I, from what I understand is one of the biggest financial disasters WB has had in umpteen years. And finally, we got to Blue Beetle. And Blue Beetle has officially, as of this morning, announced a failure. It did okay domestically, and it did okay internationally, but I believe the total numbers was $110 million against, I believe, a $110 million budget. It had a lower budget than many other superhero movies because it was supposed to be a made-for-TV movie. It was supposed to be a part of the Max package. We were going to get Batgirl and Blue Beetle, and they would only come out on the streaming services. But it was so good, they wanted to push it out into theaters. And I know I haven't made a video here on Comic Story, and I've done a review over on Absolutely, our podcast channel, but I haven't made anything over here. But I loved Blue Beetle. I thought Blue Beetle was amazing. It's a great story. It's got great characters in it. They did a great job of tying it into a universe, but not the DCEU universe. I thought it was great. I also did enjoy The Flash, but I will say there's a lot of problems with The Flash, and I made a whole video on that, just in case you're wondering. And to this day, I still have not seen Shazam, Fury of the Gods. And I don't think I will. But we now have a situation. Shazam did poorly. Flash did worse. Blue Beetle did even worse. And we're sitting on Aquaman 2. Now, Aquaman 2 has already been documented as having four reshoots to line it up with different universe attempts that they're doing at WB and DCEU. Four documented reshoots that doesn't even account for ones that we don't know existed which i guarantee there's probably a couple more in there apparently they've also rotated which batman shows up in it from ben affleck to michael keaton back to ben affleck back to michael keaton uh rumor has it at some point in the middle of all of that there was george clooney but i might be making that rumor up but anyway the situation with aquaman is that aquaman exists like, <laughs> i hate to say that's kind of the problem okay so Aquaman, as of this point, as of September 1st, there's no teaser, there's no trailer, there's no stills, there's no images. The only stuff we have, if you Google it, is images from the first Aquaman or set photos of Jason Momoa and Ben Affleck getting a coffee because people were driving by them as they were filming it. That's what we have to work with for Aquaman 2. Aquaman 2... Uh, you know, I'm not even going to verify, but I believe it's coming out December 2nd. It's, it's the end of the year regardless. It doesn't matter the exact date, okay, for the sake of this. But that means 
September, October, and November, they need to ramp up an entire movie release. That means that we need to get all the promotion, all the toys that are supposed to exist and spoil everything for us. All of that is supposed to come out in three months. Three months. They're going to hype up an entire DCEU movie. And I can tell you right now, with zero knowledge of the plot, the characters, or what they're doing, that movie is going to tank. And I think WB knows that, hence why we haven't seen anything on it. Because the problem with James Gunn taking over the DCEU is it was very public. And it really shouldn't have been. You see, when James Gunn came in back in November of 2022, the entire DC fandom went, what? The problem is, if you're a diehard DCEU fan, you still were going to go see the movies regardless. You were still fighting for Snyder Cut or against Snyder Cuts. You were still fighting for Zack Snyder to get back or against him getting back. And we were still divided as a fandom in its whole. But there was one clear idea that was going on in the DC universe at this time. Eventually, they would fix what's here. They would pick up the shattered remains of Zack Snyder's world and it would become the new WB world or Zack Snyder would return. At no point did anyone really consider the fact, I'm sure some people did before one of you guys goes in the comments down below and they're like, this obscure YouTuber that no one's ever heard of talked about it. Cool. I don't, I, I don't care because it, it ruins my point. It doesn't matter. I don't think anybody was sitting around going, what we just need is a straight reboot. And the reason is we don't have reboots in movies to that degree yet. The MCU is the first of its kind. It completely changed the movie landscape. And if you dispute that, you don't know what you're talking about. Whole entire movies that should never be franchises decided to become franchises. We had situations where, was it Universal wanted to take all of their movie monsters and make a dark pictures universe in which they all cross over and eventually team up to fight something or fight against something. I, it was never clear because it bombed that bad. We never knew what the point of that was. We no, no one knew. We didn't know what they were doing. But that's what the MCU has done. We've moved into an era where instead of making like art house pieces or movies that speak to you, there's more products being turned out than anything at this point. Movie companies are more concerned with a family-friendly, front-facing movie that can sell toys and interlink into a giant movie universe, which will make you go see all these products, than they are worried about making a solid movie. And that's proven by the MCU. As many, as, I, as many movies as I love in the MCU, I don't think we have a single MCU movie that we can argue has zero problems. Except Winter Soldier, that movie's incredible, and don't fight me about it. Anyway, no movie in the MCU is perfect at all. It, it just doesn't exist. But it doesn't matter because it sold billions of dollars. And that is our problem with the DCEU because up until James Gunn took over, the DCEU was still selling toys. It was still selling merchandise. It was still a, while confusing, cohesive universe to some extent. We still got mentions of things. And you were still wanting to see the movies to see how they would fix things. How would they link it all together? All they had to do was come out and say, I'll use The Flash for an example. If James Gunn was never announced and The Flash came out and we were like, guys, The Flash movie has Ben Affleck Batman. It has Gal Gadot Wonder Woman. Jason Momoa shows up. I think this is it. I think WB is rebuilding their universe. Word would have traveled and I guarantee you that movie would have done better than it is. We also would have seen a lot more people complaining about the CG, but we'll never know because that world doesn't exist. But part of the problem is... When we went to see The Flash, we saw these elements. If you're a hardcore superhero movie fan, you know these elements don't matter anymore. You know that James Gunn has been announced to take over. So other than, oh cool, look, Batman's in this one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't link to anything. It doesn't tell a grand story. But it does tell a fun and great Flash story. But if you don't care about The Flash, why would you go see that? I mean, at the end of the day, The Flash had 19 gajillion seasons on CW. Most people got their fill of The Flash because it went from amazing to terrible and they wanted nothing else to do with The Flash. We know his powers. We know what he can do. We know the capabilities. We know all of the stuff about The Flash. So what is the movie going to do? Oh, and you called it Flashpoint? The story that has been told like in animation, multiple books in the CW TV show? So you, you, you named it Flashpoint 
which I've seen. I've gotten nine seasons of Flash in my face all over this region. And on top of that, it doesn't link to anything. To, to, to stack things working against the Flash, I hear rumors that the CG is terrible and that the director's trying to argue that it's intentional. To which I stand, it does actually make sense what he says, but at one line in the movie would have at least clarified that to the general audience. Oh man, the, the, when you go through time, it looks like we're in PS2. I mean, that's literally all you had to do. I, I don't know why you would have sounded that way, but that's literally all you had to do. Anyway, so why care about The Flash? You're going to get your hardcores. The movie, I believe, broke even. Let me double check. I got it literally right here. Why don't I look? Uh, no, not even close. Not even close to breaking even. That movie did terrible. It had a $200 million budget, as far as we know. Guarantee it was a lot more. And it made $268 million. On layman's terms, you'd be like, oh, that made $60 million. Nope, because the marketing budget as is like double that. That's the general rough estimation. That movie did not do well. Okay, at all. And Blue Beetle did worse. This is the first DC movie to go into the negatives. So it was made on a budget of 104 million, and the official tally today, I believe I read it was 110 million, but the documented number on the wiki is 85 million. So either it didn't even break even or it did worse. It's the fact of the matter is no one cares. And if no one cared about the flash, for the reasons that I stated, why would they care about the Blue Beetle? The problem with the superhero movie genre is that it has to link together. It has to bring its fandom in. We all have to want to watch it. It doesn't do well on its own. That was proven in the 90s and the 2000s where it was very difficult to get any superhero movie off the ground or give it a budget. So why would we suddenly start caring about Blue Beetle? Well, because James Gunn tried to argue that it might be in his new DCU. But he's also clearly stated Superman Legacy is the beginning of the DCEU. So what is it? He said, we might keep the Flash. We might keep Blue Beetle. Okay. Well, you know what? This is the general thought I th think a lot of people had. If they show up, I'll go watch the movie then. Like, it, if I'm not in the mood to go see Blue Beetle, it's a random superhero that I've barely heard of and only the diehard DC fans know of. It, I'm one of them. Trust me. I'm on your guy's side. Blue Beetle is awesome and the movie was awesome. But only the diehard fans know about. Why does anyone care? It's a movie called Blue Beetle. You know? The Flash it literally had the most troubled history ever. The main actor, I think they're in jail. No, they're out of jail now. They are. I know they are. Okay. And they're getting help. But that doesn't change the fact that we had like two years of insanity, two years of no promotion, a TV show coming to its conclusion, a universe ending and no movie mattering. The fact that the Marvel movies are still able to pull in Nearly a billion dollars proves that superhero fatigue is not the issue. But it does mean that we need to have movies that are either linked together or they have to be amazing. That's really what it comes down to. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is an amazing movie. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is an amazing movie. But you know what wasn't amazing and got a lot of flack but did wildly successful numbers? Ant-Man. It worked because it's still linked. According to the wiki, Ant-Man was made on a $200 million budget and made $476 million, meaning it broke even and made money. It was only $76 million made, but it still made money. Ant-Man worked because we knew it was going to be important to the overall plot of the MCU. If you don't care about Ant-Man, but you're an MCU fan, you should go see Ant-Man. Also, for the record, I still haven't seen Ant-Man Quantumania, I, but both that and Shazam. I, I haven't seen either one. And I don't think I will. But anyway, that's the point I'm making. The problem with the DCEU and the problem with James Gunn right now is they came out guns blazing. Have you ever seen that meme? Dan, figure out how to get the meme in here. And then I started blasting. That's what James Gunn did. Like, and I don't even blame the guy in all honesty. If you told me tomorrow, Benny, you're in charge of the DCEU, the first thing I'd be like is, all right, tomorrow we're doing a press conference. I have so much brain soup to tell you guys about. We are making brain soup a thing! All right! <laughs> but that's it. What they should have done, announced that James Gunn was going to be in charge of the DCEU. Go ahead and announce that. We've got a guy in charge of it. And then just leave it alone. Don't tell us that he's rebooting. Let him take the flack for movies people don't like. Just put out Shazam, put out The Flash, put out Aquaman, put out Blue Beetle, 
Throw them all out there. Don't announce a reboot. I'm not saying that would have saved all of these movies, but it may have helped. It may have gotten some people to at least go see Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle this poorly is why we're making this video and the fact that there is no Aquaman promotion. But the fact is, we don't care about these four movies. If you like the superhero, you care. If you don't, you have no reason to care because we're all waiting for Superman Legacy in 2025. That's the true beginning to James Gunn's universe and that's when we can really judge him. But imagine if instead they announced that following Aquaman. James Gunn is officially rebooting the universe and he will be doing Superman Legacy in 2025. Now, before you all say, I don't know what they would have done with that Henry Cavill hoopla of him being fired and recast. And I, that had, that, I'm not even going to try to touch that with a 10-foot pole. That, Henry Cavill got done dirty by The Rock. I liked The Rock. Now I, I don't trust that man. I don't trust that man with a 10-foot pole. But that's it. That's what my problem is with the DCEU. And I wanted this to be more of an open discussion because we all have our opinions on what is going on. Let me know in the comments down below what you think is the problem with the DCEU right now. Because Blue Beetle was good. And Flash had a great core story, and I didn't see Shazam. So I really want to know your thoughts on those three movies and why you don't, why you think we don't have Aquaman 2 promotional anything. I mean, rumor has it, it's terrible. Supposedly, early screenings are it's so bad they had to go fix it. What happened? Does it have James Wan on it? Because he did one. Hold on, we're looking. Yes, James Wan is on it. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. Do you know? Let me know, please. Why am I talking weird? Brain soup. Anyway, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, Factor. And I legitimately do enjoy those meals. That's actually what I do when I need to just get some quick meal prep stuff going on because I'm constantly trying to do a proper diet so I can lift very heavy things and put them back down frequently. I wear a lot of baggy hoodies because I got that pump cover going on because the pump's not impressive, so you got to cover it. Make sure you like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts about all of this down below, and we'll be back very soon where I got a lot of thoughts about the Ultimate Universe because what is happening with Ultimate Invasion? Anyone know? I've asked you a lot of questions, just like bullet pointed in a comment down below. You know, I just have like, I'm just gonna go look at the, it's gonna be all novels from you guys, like. <laughs> Thank you guys so much, I'll see you next time right here.